This is my 2024 Tesla Model 3 equipped with the latest hardware for system and this is Canada in January where temperatures are consistently below zero for several months and snow quickly covers the streets after a snowstorm. But in the same way that the cold Canadian winters are terrible for EV batteries and their range loss, I wanted to know if the vehicle was able to full self drive even when the streets are covered in snow and camera visibility is depleted. So let's put that to the test. So the first thing we'll need to do is give the car a chance in this test and pressure wash it which realistically is needed anyways and we'll make sure that all the cameras are clear of dirt and salt and this would also be a good moment for me to shamelessly ask you to leave this video a like and check out my amazon storefront link down below in this video's description if you're looking to buy some accessories for your tesla on amazon all right so here we are in the car i'm going to turn on this camera here so we can get a second angle turn that on right here and we're gonna take off and we can see here full self drive all right so here we have it in full self drive all right perfect it has cleared the windshield and we're gonna be taking off oh take over immediately all right so as you can see uh immediately right off the gate it did not like the fact that i think it couldn't see any of the lines or anything on the street so let's try that again right now and we'll see if it does any better of course, I had to put the Rainbow Road on. All right. So it's definitely going relatively slow, slow, which isn't a bad thing because the traction on these streets during the winter is really bad. There was just a snowstorm last night about, I'd say 10, 15 centimeters. So about this much snow is currently covering the ground and the city hasn't had time yet to fully remove everything on these side streets. On these main streets up here though, it's quite a bit better. They have actually came and there's also a lot more volume of cars. So we're pretty close to the curb, I must say. There's a car over here. We've got the left turn signal on. There's a car coming up here real quick. Oh, all right. It did not like that. So there was a car over here and a car here, and it basically just failed midway through the intersection, uh, which is definitely not secure at all. So I'm not sure if it's only because the cameras might be a bit, you know, it might be a bit harder for the cameras to identify moving objects because there's snow in the air as well, but that was definitely a failure in my books. Let's do this again though. We can see here, there's a lot more volume of traffic. So the road is quite a bit more cleared. Now for the record, I was assuming that this test would be a complete failure just because the nature of how full self-drive works, um, it is utilizing the cameras to identify other cars, identify uh, the lines on the road and so forth. And if they're covered, well, there's not much that can be done, right? All right, so, I mean, that was okay. That being said, right now we're already at two, I believe, two or three, I'll make a counter on screen for the amount of times it's failed and told me to take off. Also, let's keep in mind, I have it on chill right now. We'll put it on standard. I had it on chill the other day when I was on the highway and it kept switching lanes, but I just wanted to stay in the right lane going about the speed limit. So I put it on chill, but we'll put it on standard because it's a bit more prudent right now. All right, left turn signal as we would expect, of course. And I'm hoping we'll get onto a couple streets here that haven't been plowed nearly as much. So I'm not sure what it's identifying right now. There are no cars in the vicinity at all. All right. It definitely has a harder time analyzing what's going on, which makes complete sense because there's debris all over the road. Right now we're literally stopping for absolutely no reason in the middle of the road, which is kind of bizarre. If there was someone behind us, they definitely would have been pissed off. Knowing the drivers in my region, slowed down to go over speed bump, fair enough. Can't, uh, can't be upset at that. One thing I don't really love about full self-drive is that it tends to hug the curb, especially when you're also trying to do like a right turn, which I'm not a huge fan of uh, personally. I like to take curves a little bit wider and recorrect, but that's just, I guess, my driving style. All right, so right now we are so far behind from the curve and considering the snow banks right now on each side, 
you cannot see any cars. So there's a car turning here and now, yes, it is clear. Very good. Taking off and going down towards the water. Nice dog. Not going very fast though, 27. Not sure what the deal with that is. It's going real slow for no apparent reason. It is able to identify the line. It's saying it's a double line. It is not, it's a single line though. Uh, identifying the cars correctly, all oh, that's fine. I'm not sure why we're going so slow though, even though I have my max set at 47 and the uh, speed limit is 40 here. I guess it wants us to take in the scenic, uh, the scenic views of the fresh snowfall. Let me know, by the way, in the comments, uh, do you live somewhere where there's snow or are you watching this from like Texas or California? It might look nice, right? But living with it on a daily is kind of difficult. Anyways, driving up here into a roundabout. So luckily, I mean, it's Monday morning right now. There is no one on the street. Oh, okay. We just, we just drove over the curb here, which is definitely not great. Yeah, we just drove over a curb about this high. So not the end of the world. It's not a, in a curb rash, but it did not identify that. All right, we'll have it go right here, which isn't all too far. We'll have it go this way because we're gonna be doing a left turn with that. And here we go, full self-drive. All right, left turn signal on. <clears throat> For the record, there are no cars around here. Object in path detected. Okay, so there might be there might be some snow on some of the cameras or whatnot. There are no there are no objects or cars in path. That being said, at least it's you know trying to tell you, hey, there might be something because it's not sure. I'd rather that than it just takes off and hits a cyclist or something, of course. <clears throat> but yeah, coming back up here to this roundabout, it has these low sort of curbs, and I've even done this in the summer and it didn't do too well. It kind of tends to drive over them. We have a car coming up. Okay, we are driving completely over the curb. That was not good at all. Doing the left turn though. Overall verdict for this right now, I would say it has a hard time seeing the lines, obviously. It also drives really slowly because it's obviously analyzing a lot more during the winter, which is kind of making it relatively unusable driving around town. On the highway, I did it last week and it had just snowed. It was totally fine. But right now, I mean, driving 27, someone's coming right up behind me real quick. So yeah, I'm just gonna speed up because the guy's literally tailgating me. I'm just gonna take that off and let this guy go. All right, anyways, I don't blame them for tailgating me. I was going 27 and a 40, but even still. Going in between these vehicles here, it's coming down pretty much to a creep and then it wants to park. All right, it's gonna try to park actually because I brought it to a, is it gonna park? I'm not sure what it's doing, honestly. Okay, I guess that's it, we're, oh. All right, I'm gonna disengage it. We're in the middle of the street here. So I'm just gonna disengage, let this car go by. Yeah, overall, I'd say it, it does decently, but it kind of goes back like a year or two in terms of its performance. It's definitely not at, up to the same standard of performance as the wherever we're at 12.6 or whatnot in the summer. All right, yeah, so as you can see, uh, we drove around my little town here with full self drive, and this is right after a snowstorm. Honestly, it didn't do too great, right? It was driving extremely slowly, which was one of the largest issues. Um, other than the fact that it was periodically just telling me to take over because it wasn't, I suppose, able to identify um, where the roads were, the lines, as well as other vehicles. And another issue they need to take into account is the fact that when you're driving in winter, anyone who, who lives in a northern climate where you get snow, the amount of slush and debris that kicks up onto your car and is going to be periodically blocking all of the cameras, which the car is relying on for full self-drive uh, is, is a large problem as well. So every once in a while, you'd have to go outside and clear all of, just let this truck go by. <clears throat> 
So yeah, every once in a while, you'd have to get out of the car and clear the rear camera, the side cameras, the front cameras, and so forth. So it's definitely not the best or made for uh, driving in winter with full self-drive. However, I still think it was a fun test to try out. And I'd say it's like 70% there. By the way, if you're interested in supporting the channel, make sure, of course, drop a like, subscribe, as well as checking out my Amazon storefront where I have a list of different Amazon accessories that I've personally used on my vehicle uh, and that you should check out as well for both Model Ys and Model 3s. Check that out down below in this video's description and pinned comment, as well as if you want to buy a Tesla for yourself, make sure to check out my affiliate link. You'll get some free money. I'll get a small little kickback for having referred you. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.